In this video of Open Broadcaster software, I'm going to be showing you how to use hotkeys within OBS. So to get there, you go back to settings, settings, go down to the hotkeys tab. And from here, you'll have hotkeys for audio and hotkeys for broadcasting. Now you may remember from the audio video that you can actually use push to talk within OBS. What push to talk does is when you have this selected, your microphone will always be muted until you're holding down the push to talk key which you can set here, and if you want a second push to talk key, you can set that in the second box. Using push to talk is useful if you want to minimize the amount of background noise in your video, since it'll only pick up noise when you're actually ready to talk. And it can be useful as well when you're streaming, when you only want the selective messages you choose to actually go through on the stream so that people can hear them. Now, an alternative to using push to talk would be to simply have a hotkey for muting and unmuting your microphone. The difference here would be that when you unpress the button that mutes your mic, it's still going to be muted. Whereas with push to talk, you have to hold down the button in order to talk on the video. Now, if you want to be able to mute all the other non-microphone audio by hitting a hotkey, you can do that by setting it in mute, unmute desktop. And this could be useful if you really want people to be able to hear what you're saying and you don't want any other distractions. Maybe the background music was being too loud and you just want them to be able to hear you, then you can set a hotkey to do that. Now, if you want to actually set a hotkey, all you need to do is click in the selected box and push a key combination at the same time. It could be a single key on your keyboard, but that's generally not recommended. If you're going to do push to talk, it could be something as simple as V, or you could do control V as an alternative. And what's good about having to push down two or more keys to activate a hotkey is that it's unlikely to interfere with any of the other programs running on your computer or the game that you may be trying to record. Now, if you want to get rid of a single hotkey, you simply have to click the clear button to the right of the hotkey box and it will reset to none. Now, as for the broadcast hotkeys, you start off with start stream. And start stream means that when you have a connection set up in your settings, which would be under broadcast settings, I will hit yes to save the changes there. And you choose a service here and you've put in your keys, the URLs, etc., all the other information you need to. Then, then hitting the start stream hotkey is going to start sending the data from OBS straight to that live stream. Therefore, start stream hotkeys are something that you want to be careful with because you don't want to accidentally start broadcasting your computer or whatever you're doing unintentionally to the whole internet. So if you are going to set start stream or stop stream hotkeys, make sure it's something you won't unintentionally press. Now, in my experience, start recording has actually been one of the most useful hotkeys simply because it allows you to start recording what you need to record without having to exit out of your application or your game to go back to OBS to hit the start record button. But like start and stop stream, it's important to make sure this isn't a hotkey combination you'd normally press for start recording and stop recording. Because if you have a hotkey for start recording set, then you might end up accidentally recording a four hour video to your computer, which isn't the end of the world, but it will take up a lot of space and it'll be using resources in the background while you may be doing something completely unrelated to video recording and to begin with. With stop recording, I'm not even sure having a hotkey set for that is such a great idea because if you stop recording on accident, then you just lose everything you were working for. I figure with stop recording, it's better to just manually do it because then you're sure it's never going to accidentally stop for no reason. Now, as for a replay buffer, what this is, is having a temporary recording of the last X number of seconds of video footage. It'll only hold the last number of seconds that you set up in the broadcast settings down here, replay buffer length in seconds. And you'll notice that the replay buffer cannot be larger than the amount of random access memory on your computer because when the footage is temporarily stored in the replay buffer, it's putting that on the random access memory. Now, when you hit record from replay buffer, what it's going to do is take the information that's stored in the RAM, the buffer, and use that as the basis for a new video, a new permanent video that's actually saving to your hard drive. So if you hit record from replay buffer, it's going to take the previous 30 seconds and combine that with all the rest of the footage you record from this point forward and save that into a permanent file. Now, why recording from the replay buffer is so great is because not only can you go back 30 seconds or so in time to capture the footage and make that into a highlight, 
but you can also start recording for an unlimited amount of time until you're ready to stop the highlight. As a result, you capture the exact footage you wanted and it makes a very easy to edit highlight. So that's all for hotkeys inside of Open Broadcaster software. They're not too hard to understand, but they sure are useful to use, so I do recommend you give them a try when you're recording your videos. In the next video, we'll be talking about how to automatically silence your microphone when you're not speaking into it using the microphone noise gate. See you then.